When I was doing a little exploring on YouTube, I came across a few videos on bubble walls. I thought this was a great concept and decided I wanted to build one, but I didn't want to just copy what was out there. Most of what I found used just water, and a few with only oil. The idea that I came up with was using both water and oil. Since each produced a different bubble formation, I thought using both in the same bubble wall would be unique. This video is on how I built this. The acrylic I'm using for the panel is 3 16th inch thick. The panel size will be 23 inches wide by 37 inches high. The square tubing I will be using is 1 and a quarter inches. For the sides of the panel I am using 1 quarter inch thick acrylic, which I am cutting just shy of 1 and 5 sixteenths. Here, I am sanding the strips so they are slightly larger than the square tubes. I cut some plywood at one and a half inches to use as a jig. To bond the end strip onto the acrylic sheet, I am using a product called Weld on 4. It is a water-thin solvent that will wick between the joint, causing a chemical reaction that melts and merges the material. The initial bond happens quickly, but it takes a few days for full curing. To make sure there is full contact between the two parts, I add weight to the joint. I will wait at least an hour before removing them. At that point, the bond should be strong enough to work with. The next step is cutting and preparing the bubble deflectors. There will be a total of eight deflectors, two of them from three inch tubes, and the other six using one and a quarter inch tubes. I'm cutting them slightly larger than the panel width. Using 100 grit sandpaper, I am sanding the deflectors so they will fit into the panel. To help with this, I use some scrap acrylic to build a mock-up version of the larger panel. For a final sanding, I use 220 grit. I am now going to drill three holes in the tubes so they will fill with water. For the larger deflectors, I use a 3 8 inch bit. And the smaller ones, I use 1 quarter inch. I will be placing three of the smaller tubes five inches from the bottom of the panel, spaced equally apart. To help with this process, I cut some pieces of MDF to use as jigs to help position them. When using this style of applicator, you need to squeeze the air out, then stop squeezing when you tilt it down toward the joint. This will prevent any solvent from dripping out. If any weld-on does drip on the panel, don't wipe it off. Letting it evaporate will cause some damage, but wiping it will create a total mess. The only difference when placing the top deflectors is they are 8 inches from the edge. The large deflectors are centered between the top and bottom smaller ones and space evenly between the square tubes. I will now be adding these diamond-shaped acrylic pieces into the deflectors, which should create a nice deflection of light. Now with the deflectors filled with the diamond-shaped acrylic, it is time to add the second side to the bubble wall. To flip it over, I use spring clamps to hold the panel together so I wouldn't lose any of the acrylic pieces. Once the top and bottom pieces are lined up, I will start bonding the second side. As done previously, I used weight to make sure there is a solid connection between the two pieces.
Now that the sides are done, I will next bond the square oil tubes to the inside panel. Before doing this, I made sure the tubes are slightly proud from the bottom of the panel. This is so when the panel is sanded, the tubes will be absolutely flush with the bottom. I allowed one inch of space for the LED lights between the end of the square tubes and panel top. The next step is bonding the other side of the deflectors to the panel wall. But for this, I need to make an applicator to access between the panels. I taped some 0.5 by 1.5 millimeter tube to copper wire, then added a 20 gauge needle at the end. I am now sanding the bottom of the panel. I start off with 120 grit until the edge is flush, then use 220 to finish it off. Here I am cutting some 3 16th acrylic for the bottom plate. The size will be 1 and 5 8 inches wide by 20 and 1 8 inches long. This will leave a 3 8 inch lip around the bottom panel, which will help in positioning it. After measuring for where the air holes will be, I drilled pilot holes. Once I complete a water test, I will finish drilling through. I set the bottom plate on the panel, then added weight to keep it from sliding around. Then using a 3 8 inch piece of plywood as a jig, I'm setting it into the final position. At this point, I am only spot bonding the bottom plate to keep it in position. Once the panel is flipped over and sitting on the floor, I will then complete the process. With the bottom of the panel now on the floor, I will first weld the square tubes to the bottom plate. This bond separates the water from the oil so I need to get it right. With tubing attached to a fiberglass rod, I applied a liberal amount of weld on. After verifying that the solvent had wicked around the entire tube, I moved on to bonding the rest of the panel. The next day after bonding the bottom plate to the panel, I added water to test for any leaks. Then after 24 hours without any, I moved on to finishing drilling the holes in the bottom plate. For this I used a 1 16th drill bit. Now that the bottom plate is attached, I moved on to polishing the sides of the panel. There are a couple of ways of doing this. One is sanding and buffing, the other is sanding then flame polishing. I chose the former. I started off with 120 grit and ended with 2000 grit. I then buffed the edge using a product called Nova's Plastic Polish. Now that the panel is complete, I will start on the air chambers, which are basically small chambers that fill with air then release that air through the holes in the bottom plate. I initially thought of adding the bulkheads directly to the bottom plate, but the size of the air holes does make a difference in the formation of the bubbles. I found that a 1 16th holes produces the best bubble, especially with the oil. The bulkhead diameter is twice that. As well with using these air chambers, there are no bulkheads blocking the bottom LED lights. I am drilling one quarter inch for the brass bulkheads and five sixteenths for between the air chamber and the bottom panel.
Since the brass bulkheads were a little too long to fit into the square tube, I had to cut a little off the non-threaded end. To ensure of no leak, I place an O-ring on each side of the bulkhead. I then added a washer before securing it in place. With that complete, I moved on to cutting some acrylic caps to seal off the air chambers. Using weld on four, I bonded the caps to the air chambers. After waiting about 20 seconds, I added pressure to the joint. Then after about an hour, I did a water test. The next step is attaching the air chambers to the panel. Once in position, I applied weld on between the two. As you can see, the solvent will wick around the hole. Then I added weight for around 20 minutes before carrying on. To make sure there will be no possible leaks, I also added a product called Weld on 1802 to all the joints between the air chamber and panel. After this, I just needed to repeat this process another 10 times. Off camera, I sprayed a frosted glass paint to three sides of the square tube. For the lighting, I will be using two 16 foot long LED strips. After inserting the LED strips into the light tube, I bonded them on each end using a product called Instant Bond. For the top of the bubble wall, I'm leaving 23 and a half inches of LED strips between the two light tubes. This should provide enough workable slack. Now that the LED strips are secured in the light tubes, I wrap them around the panel. Since the light tubes fit quite snug, I won't need to glue them in place. Here is a schematic showing the airflow into the panel. The air comes out of the pump, then through the check valve, and then into the shutoff valve, and finally into the panel. Because I wanted a check valve coming out of each oil tube, I reversed it. The air first goes into the shutoff valve, then into the check valves, then into the panel. Here, I am using standard 3 16 inch tubing used in aquarium setups, and the spring clips I use are 5 millimeter. I will be sure to leave a material list below.
Here I had to make a change. When I was running the bubble wall checking for leaks, some of the aquarium check valves would slip off the tubing. I solved this by replacing them with fuel line check valves. With the plumbing completed, I placed the pump into the bubble wall base. Since I have been keeping the focus of this video on building the panel for the bubble wall, I will do another video on the construction of this base. After adding water and oil to the bubble wall, I adjusted the airflow. Once that was done, I closed everything in. I then added some blackstone. <laughs> 